Welcome to Educator.com. We've got another lesson for Introduction to C++. Today we're covering arrays and pointers. Okay, now array use a chunk of memory. I don't know how you want to call that a, a block of memory, a, a pizzazz of memory, but there's a lot of memory will be in a chunk and then you can access pieces of it through the array. You de declare it with square brackets. That's where you will see square brackets as a expression in size which will give you how large you want, how much space you want for that array. And specific elements within an array are also used, the square brackets, but then there's an index into the array to get you want the zeroth one at the first, you want the first, second, third, you want the last one. That would be your index inside the square brackets. And they can be multi-dimensional. You can have your grid where you've got two square brackets which indicates a two-dimensional array. Or you can have a three-dimensional array. You put three sets of square brackets in there, as many as you need. You can initialize them at compile time or at runtime. Now, uh, one of the things uh, about it, we looked at this a little bit. You have character strings. This is left over from C, where you have an array of characters can be considered a string. Now, in C++, the preferred usage is to use the string object, but there are occasions when you will want to use the old-fashioned C version, the character string. We'll have a brief discussion of that. Now in pointers, pointers are similar to arrays, or at least in the, the way you access the data in an array. You can either use your square brackets or you can use a pointer which holds the location or the address where the data is located. And there's a bunch of different ways of using pointers in C++, but the arrays, is, that's why they're, they're combined in this one lesson. It's, it's most useful when you're dealing with arrays. And we will deal with the reference and dereference operators. We'll talk about pointer arithmetic. Arrays can be used as a function parameter, but there's no call by value for an array. Think about it, arrays can be huge. The, the way co copy by value works, it takes a copy of the parameter in the function, and it uses that copy. Now, if you've got 12 gazillion array, and you're going to copy, that takes too long to copy 12 gazillion, so we don't do that. Then we have the new and delete operators for allocating and deallocating memory. If you've had any familiarity with C, you might be aware of the malloc function, which allocates memory, and the free function. But we won't be using those because there is an actual operator in C++ to do that job. Okay, up until this lesson, we've been dealing with a variable that has one memory location. You can have int a and it's equal to 7. And so the compiler would say, oh, okay, let's uh, put a little chunk right here, and we're going to call that a, and we'll put a 7 in there, a single piece of data. Now with arrays, we're not limited to one. Now we can have as many as memory as we can hold. And in some cases, even more than what your memory can hold, but we won't cover those types of issues. So now we can have an array. And using those square brackets like we mentioned earlier, and say we've got 10 slots. So now the memory, if we look at it as a box with boxes in it, and I'm not going to try to get exactly 10 here, so now, this is your array variable, which has got 10 slots. So there, there are multiple pieces. The pieces of data tend to be the same type. There's ways of getting around that, but we won't talk about those today. Um, the compiler allocates enough memory based on the size and the number of elements. So an int array is larger than a char array, but it's smaller than a double array. So the, the double, you know, 
each one of these slots to put a number in has got to be eight bytes across. Whereas for the integer, it only needs to be four bytes across. And the compiler takes care of all that for you. So you don't have to worry about where things are and that sort of stuff. So here we have int, which are four bytes. We want 100 slots for Fred. 100 times 4 is 400 bytes. Here's a short. Barney is shorter than Fred, if you're familiar with the cartoons. That's only two bytes. But two bytes, but we've allocated 200 slots. So 200 times 2 is 400 bytes. Now here we have a char for pebbles, 400 characters. A char is one byte, so we've allocated 400 bytes. And we'll also look at the multi-dimensional arrays, where you've got an array of arrays. So here we have a three-dimensional array, Mr. Slate. This is a double. It's two by five by five. There's part of your homework assignment is to calculate how many bytes this is going to take. Using the size of operator, which works, will also give you the correct answer, but see if you can work it out before you try that. And you should try that also. Okay, how do we declare an array? We declare an array pretty much like we declare everything, any other variable, but we add those square brackets to tell it how much space do we need. It's possible to calculate this on the fly. Um, sometimes it's a good idea, sometimes it's not. Your best bet is to have something that you're going to use as a variable. Now, we haven't talked about this before, but we have the const keyword that says this value is not going to be changed in the code. This is a constant. Now we can use max values instead of 500. So here we have the value is declared to have max values of numbers of slots, which will be 500 slots. And then we want to do some calculations for each value inside this array. So our loop is from 0, which is the first slot until we're less than the max slot because the actual max slot which we'll talk about some more it goes past and then we I plus plus so this will go from 0 to max values minus 1 and do our calculations for values of I now if you during the course of programming or someone adds features or finds bugs you need to change this value you need not, we need to be 600. Okay, fine. We change this constant to 600. You don't have to go searching for all the 500s all throughout the code and then worry about, well, is this the correct 500? You might have several things that want to be 500. You don't want to change the wrong 500, but if you have max, you could have something else. Uh, MV is equal to 500. It's totally unrelated to max values. So you can't just go globally change 500 to 600. You'll, you'll cause problems. So if you just change max values, max values automatically become 600 throughout the rest of the code. You recompile everything. You have less chance for errors.